Dear colleagues and dear friends, when we will go to the Red Planet? Everybody is excited. We see a lot of documentaries, a lot of movies, also in YouTube. There are very good presentations. But here I want to teach you how we will go there and especially when. And if you answer the first question, maybe we come also to the second one. In this presentation, I try to tell you a method, not to tell simply how, but to understand why, in order to be able, even though the boundary conditions are changing, for instance, if we are improving our technology, to come to an answer. I hope you will enjoy. Which position are occupying the planets in the solar system? We know from the first Keplero law that their orbits are elliptical and the Sun is occupying one of the focus. And uh, the orbit of Mars is also not laying on the same plane. Its inclination is about two degrees, but we are neglecting this now. For the origin of the rotations, we are considering the vernal axis which is crossing the Earth position at 20th of March and 20th of September. Moreover, the position of the perihelion of the two orbits is laying at 104 degrees for the Earth at, at minus 24 degrees for Mars. Here are some astronomical parameters of the two planets, where A is the major semi-axis of the ellipse and E its eccentricity. The astronomical unit is 150 million kilometers, more or less, and this is important for all the considerations we are doing for in the orbit. The revolution time for the Earth, we know, it's 365 days, and for Mars is 687 days. And this information we can get also from the third Kepler law, saying that the square of the time, the revelation time, is proportional to the cube of the semi-axis uh, uh, by using this uh, parameter mi, which is the gravity constant of the planet, the product of the universal constant g and the mass m. And here is displayed the gravity constant of the two planets for the Earth and for Mars, respectively. The reference date is 19 of April 2020, where the Earth and Mars are occupying the position displayed in the uh, picture. And here is an animation of the motion for one year of Mars. Which trajectory is possible? We need to obey to the gravity law, so not everyone is feasible. Both planets are moving and we need to minimize the cost. Definitely, our trajectory must be elliptical with one focus on the Sun because we are in the solar system. We need to match the Earth at the launching date and Mars at arrival date. And we want to minimize the cost, so this trajectory must be tangential to the orbits of the planet, as by Oman theorem. We will see this better in the next slide. To make it simple, let us assume that the Earth and Mars have both circular orbits. This is the Oman trajectory, the yellow one. It's an ellipse having this perihelion close to the Earth orbit and the aphelion close to the Mars orbit. And uh, this is an animation of a transfer between the two planets. The Oman transfer is also the longest one, but we know that our orbits are not circular and they are even off center. So there are existing different uh, possibilities. Which one is the right one? Definitely, we are looking for the one which is more convenient for us. And it means we need to uh, find the condition when the aphelion is the minimum. We need to wait when Mars is occupying this position 
at the arrival date when the Earth is laying on the opposite position at the launching date. This condition is happening very seldom, more or less every 15 years. The next launch window will be on the 17th of March 2033. And here are displayed also the data of the transfer orbit. The radius of the perihelion at the launching date is here, and the radius of the aphelion at arrival date is here. And by means of this relation, we can calculate the major and minor semi-axis of the elliptical orbit, and also the uh, travel time by means of the third Keplero equation. The mi is the mi of the sun, because we are moving around the sun. Half of this time is our transfer time, 238 days. Are they possible different trajectories, which are not Oman ones? Let's say elliptical and heliocentric, but with the perihelion smaller than the Earth's orbit. So it's displayed here. In this case, uh, we need to uh, still wait up to 20th of August 2033, but uh, the transfer time will be much smaller, only 75 days. We are only traveling part of the ellipse, it means from this position to this position. Why we are not choosing this trajectory, we will say later on. Coming back to the Oman trajectory, we are now defining the velocities which are needed for moving our spacecraft. And uh, for doing that, uh, we need to recall our energy conservation law. So the cinetic energy plus potential energy during the orbit is constant, uh, as expressed also here below, where the m is the mass of our spacecraft, the v is its velocity, m is the gravity constant of the, uh, of the moving system, so can be the Earth or can be the Mars or the Sun, and A is the semi-axis of the orbit. And by means of this formula, we can determine the velocity of the body. First, we consider the absolute velocity, where A is the semi-axis of the transfer orbit, so the orbit around the Sun. So we are using mi of the Sun. And we find for the perihelion, 32,000 meters per second, and for the aphelion here at the opposite position, 23,000. But which is the velocity of the planet instead? The velocity of the Earth at the launching position is about 30,000 meters per second, and the velocity at the arrival position of Mars is 26.3 thousand. Eventually, the relative velocity, so 1 minus 2, is the velocity of our spacecraft in reference to the launching or to the arrival planet. So 2,300 for launching from the Earth and 3,200 for the arrival at Mars, with minus because in this case the spacecraft is traveling against the planet. Let's repeat now the same procedure for a non-Oman trajectory. Practically, we have the same equations, but what is changing is that as far as our transfer orbit is not any longer tangential, but is crossing the Earth orbit, here we need to make a vectorial sum and not easily a difference. And we find eventually 23,600 for the velocity relative to the Earth, so at the launching date, and minus 15,000 for the velocity relative to Mars, so at arrival date. But those velocities are too much for our standard rockets, for our technology. We have seen that in order to travel to Mars, we need a special trajectory, which is elliptical. 
and uh, this is possible every 15 years if we want to match the minimum path otherwise it's still possible every two years because the two planets must be in a special position each other but uh, the beginning of any space travel is always a circular orbit around the Earth, this one. And at the end, we need also to match another circular orbit around Mars, this one. And those are the uh, planet orbit, while our travel is a heliocentric orbit. So the question is how to move from one to another introduce the hyperbolic orbits and this is a key concept of the entire presentation i need your full attention here we start always from the energy conservation law in this case at the first member we have velocity square divided by two and me divided by r with minus and the r is the radius at the orbit of the planet, the circular orbit, in this case the parking orbit, GEO. And the velocity square is the velocity in this point. This velocity we need to determine is the velocity of another special trajectory, which we call hyperbolic, because from this position the spacecraft is leaving the Earth gravity as is entering into the heliocentric orbit. On the second member, we have this v infinite square, which is the velocity at the limit of the sphere of influence of the Earth. And this is, uh, let's say, theoretically at infinite distance from the Earth. So in this case, the second member becomes zero. And uh, the formula below shows uh, the value of this velocity. If we assume that we are uh, starting from a parking orbit of 190 km, summing the radius of the Earth, we um, can determine this velocity because all the parameters are known, and we come to 11,259 meters per second. The velocity of the circular orbit, we know it is uh, given by this formula, it's 7,000 790 meter per second. The delta V is the difference VH minus VC 3469 meter per second. And this is the velocity, the delta V, that we need to apply when we are on the circular orbit in order to match the transmars injection. What does it mean? That with this delta V at this position, we are capable to enter the hyperbolic orbit up to the heliocentric orbit of the Sun without giving any other delta V, with, without making any other maneuver. Here we are introducing some basic concept about hyperbolic orbits with some formulas. The two parameters which are needed are the velocity infinite and the radius of the perigee. So the velocity infinite is the velocity at infinite distance from the Earth. But actually this infinite is limited to the sphere of influence. Radius of the perigee in this case is the radius of the orbit from when we are starting our maneuver, which is in this case the radius of the Earth plus 190 km. The semi-axis A is defined as the distance in between the intersection of the two asymptotes and the position of the perigee, so this distance. B is the distance from the center of the planet and the asymptote of orbit. And the asymptote gives also the direction of the V infinite. Another important parameter is this angle alpha infinite. The alpha infinite is the angle in, uh, between the two asymptotes. 
what is happening approaching Mars. So also in this case, from the heliocentric orbit here, we need to enter the circular orbit of Mars. And for doing that, once again, we are entering another hyperbolic orbit. The velocity at the hyperbolic orbit is given by this formula, where velocity infinite square is the relative velocity we have calculated when we made the delta v calculation for the elliptical orbit. In this case, we assume for the parking orbit at Mars 1,025 kilometers. So our radius is 3,396 kilometers. The velocity h is calculated by means of the same formula as we have seen for the Earth. The velocity of the circular orbit, this one, is also calculated by a similar formula. And eventually we come to the delta v, which is minus 2,363 meters. What does it mean minus? That we need to break. In this point, if we want to enter the uh, circular orbit, we have to apply a burn in the direction opposite to the motion. And then also, by means of the formula given in the previous slide, we, are, we can determine the angle, the B infinite, the angle which is 28.5 degrees. Finally, we want to show you an animation of the complete outbound journey. And this is caustic. It means during this travel, we don't need to apply any burning. So first hyperbolic, then elliptical, and then also hyperbolic. Uh, we need to calculate the descent orbit from this position, which is also an elliptical trajectory. The parameter of this trajectory must satisfy those conditions. The radius of the apoapsis is equal to the radius of the circular orbit and the flight path angle when entering the atmosphere must be 15 degrees. This is a condition which is experimental and depends upon the type of the spacecraft. And we assume, as for the Mars atmosphere, that we have a thickness of 123 kilometers. By means of those conditions, we can determine the two parameters a and E of the elliptical descent trajectory, and also the velocity at the apoapsis here, and the velocity when entering the atmosphere here. We need to consider that Mars is also having an uh, ro own rotation, so we reduce the velocity by means of 218 meter per second, and we come to 3,267 meter per second. But as far as we are entering uh, into the Mars atmosphere, we have uh, the drag effect. So the drag is dissipating 90% of its velocity. And at the end, it remains only 327 meter per second at the impact. To eliminate them, we need uh, to open the parachute or to burn um, our rockets for a while. About the Mars ascent. Also, in this case, we assume that the ascent orbit is uh, elliptical and the condition to be satisfied are, once again, the radius at the apsis must be the same as for the parking orbit and the uh, flight path angle gamma must be 55 degrees. This is an assumption. And by means of them, uh, we determine the parameters of this new ascent orbit. Also, the velocity at uh, Mars surface, 2,689, but minus the rotation, we come to this value. And uh, finally, the velocity at the apoapsis and the delta v, which needs to be applied when we are here in order to enter the circular orbit. If we want to uh, 
come back within uh, the shortest possible time, we need to wait up to the condition when the starting position of Mars is opposite to the final position of the Earth at the end of our journey. And this is happening on the 23rd of February 2035. So we have to wait about 450 days. And here, once again, we display the parameters of the elliptical transfer orbit. This orbit, so the radius of the apogee, sorry, the radius of the aphelion is this one, the radius of the perihelion is this one, and the parameters of the transfer orbit are calculated by means of this formula. And the travel time there is 261 days and this is the final position of the earth uh, so we come to the earth on 11th of november 2035 which is the velocity of this travel so we need uh, the speed given by the energy conservation law and um, for the semi-axis a of the transfer orbit uh, we uh, need to uh, apply the mi of the sun and we come to this velocity for the aphelion and perihelion minus the velocity of the planet where, uh, where a is the uh, semi-axis of the planet orbit uh, once for the earth and once for mars and uh, finally the relative velocity one minus two so minus 2,606 for the uh, aphelion position, so when we are leaving Mars, and 2,975 for the perihelion when we are approaching the Earth. For the hyperbolic orbit, we need to calculate uh, this value, dh, as for the same formula we have used for the Earth. This is the velocity of the hyperbolic 5115 and the delta v this velocity minus the circular orbit we have 2003 meter per second this is the delta v that we need for the trans earth injection and when we are approaching again the earth since we want to enter another circular orbit which in this case is different from the previous one this is high orbit we uh, come to this hyperbolic velocity and subtracting the circular orbit we need to apply for a delta v of minus 3196 so we need to break for entering into the earth orbit when we are at the circular orbit around the earth the new parking orbit we want to dash it so in this point we need a new barn and enter this new elliptical orbit which are the conditions of this orbit the radius of the apogee must be the same as the radius of the parking orbit and the flight path angle must be eight degrees this is also another experimental value the parameters of the descent orbit are calculated here and the velocity as the apogee also given 5890 meter per second and eventually the delta v difference of this velocity and the velocity of the circular orbit this one so minus 707 so this is also another braking velocity that we need to apply in order to start this descent trajectory and when we are entering the earth atmosphere we have this velocity minus earth rotation we come to nearly 8000 meter per second and finally this velocity is completely dissipated by the atmosphere up to the final splashdown when we open the parachute finally we are back home at the end of our journey, we produce also the delta V 
resume of the mission. So we have 12 steps starting from the parking orbit around the Earth, the low Earth orbit, up to the landing into the Earth. So in this uh, uh, column, all the speeds that we need to apply for entering the corresponding orbit, the arrival speed is here, so and the delta V. This is the most important parameter because from the delta V we can calculate the fuel amount we need for every step. And we will see all the details in the next presentation. This is the end of the first part dedicated to the orbits. And uh, it started now the second part for the loads. It is a little bit shorter with less formulas, but it is important because it's our conclusion. So I hope you will have the patience to stand the second one.